let us import the math library and do help math. Okay. Arc cosine, hyperbolic arc cosine, arc tangent, ceiling, right? cosine, degrees, the error function, exponential, absolute, factorial. It's the basic math functions. Right? Math dot square root of 1 plus 3j is, oh, sorry, different library. Math square root of 13 is 3.6 and change. Okay? The stuff you'd expect to find in a math library. Everybody okay with that? You know? Math.log base 10 of 23, 1.36 and change. No surprises yet? Okay. Import the OS, the operating system library. Okay. This is one you'll use if you're pushing files around. You want to get rid of all the temporary files that this program created. You want to find out what files are here to run on. So, os.get, current working directory. Here's where Python thinks it is. <clears throat> Some of you have been wrestling with, um, I'm running Python in a shell, and when I try to open my files, I can't find them. Every program has a sense of what directory it is currently in. Where am I? Okay, os.getcwd will tell you that. And if I do os.change directory to, let's go up a level, <coughs> dot dot, or even to users, Greg Wilson, spelled correctly, SWC3OQMOL. Okay, os.getcwd. My program now thinks it's in that directory. So if I'm opening files, it'll now find the files in this directory rather than in the scratch directory I was just in. So let's go back into scratch. Where am I? I'm there. Okay. So, help os.make tier. Let's create a new directory. So, os.make tier of temp. Okay. os.list tier of dot. Dot is a shorthand that means the current directory. So, I don't have to type in a long string. os. You know, the, the string dot character means here. So, it tells me the only thing in this directory is temp. Okay. If I uh, writer equals open my data.txt in write mode, and then writer.write a very long string indeed, and then writer.close, and now I do os.list here of what's in my directory, it says, hey, you've got two things, my data.txt and temp. So you could see if you want to write a program that processes all of the wave files in a directory, you would say os.lister of the directory name. And then for each name in that list, if it ends with .wav, go off and process it. All right. So let's do that. Let me clear out of here. Let's get rid of that temporary directory that I created. I've got my data.txt. And let's create more data.txt, uh, more stuff to be processed. And uh, short.txt is blah. Right? And long file.txt is first, second, third, fourth. Okay, I've got four data files. So, import the OS library for file name in os.listier of dot. Print file name. Okay, there's my files plus my data.txt with the tilde at the end is the backup file that Emacs created. So let me get rid of that. Fire up, uh, fire up Python again. Import the OS library. So for file name in os.list here of dot reader equals open file name in read mode. Lines equals reader dot read lines. Reader dot close. Always put our toys away. Print file name as len lines lines. Okay. So now I've got a program which says, oh, just tell me what files I've got. Right? List the contents of that directory. I'm doing it with dot, but it could be anything. Right? Read those files one at a time. 
So I don't have to build the file names into my program. I can just point at a directory and say, eat all of those. Okay. Let's try something even more sophisticated. For file name in os.listgear of dot, reader equals open file name of read, lines equals reader dot read lines, reader dot close. If len lines equals one, OS dot remove file name. I've only got one file now. OS dot remove does exactly what you would guess from the name. It removes the file. So if there's only one line in the file, get rid of it. There are other things in the OS library that will let you say if this file is more than a year old, get rid of it. If it's been a year since anybody read the file, not since it was created, but since it was looked at, get rid of it, or move it over there to be archived, or, or things like that. So the OS library is the thing that gives you what you need to go and play with the file system. Go and move files and directories around. You can rename things, os.rename. Right? If you're about to process this file, and you've already got a results file, you can say os.rename results.txt to be result.txt. Don't throw this away because we're not sure that a new one worked yet, or something like that. Right? Don't just stomp on your old results. Move them out of harm's way until you're sure everything worked. And then when you're sure it's worked, come back and delete them. So you'll use the OS library a fair bit. Um, here's another one. Um, OS.exists of myfile.txt. Oh, sorry. OS.path.exists myfile.txt, it's in a sublibrary. False. Uh, OS.path.exists of myfile.txt. There's nothing, nothing called myfile.txt in this directory. OS.path.exists of longfile.txt. Yes, OS.path.isFile, longfile.txt. Yes, OS.path.isFile of the current directory. No, it's not a file, it's a directory. Okay. The OS library contains a sub-library called path. We should have folded the two together years ago, but for historical reasons, it's os.path. Right? Does that thing exist? No. Does that thing exist? Yes. Okay, so here's my program, and I can go and look to say... It's getting noisy. I can go and look to say, does configuration parameters.dat exist? If so, I'll read my configuration from that file. If the file doesn't exist, I won't try to open it. I'll just use my default configuration. Right? If the file is there, read it and process it and use those parameters. If the file isn't there, don't try to open it. That way, my program doesn't try to open a file and blow up because the file doesn't exist. It's not helpful for a program to say, well, if you've got a configuration file, you read it. If you don't, then I will just fall over with an error. That's not the behavior you want. So you test to see if the file exists. If it does, go process it. If it doesn't, do something else. Right? Or if you've got a list of the contents of a directory, you can go through them and say, which ones are files and which ones are directories? There is an os.path.isdir is a directory. Right? You can also say, is this an audio device? Right. Is this a device? And if so, is the type of data that produces audio? You can go and poke at things and go and take a look in slash dev, D-E-V, on most Unix systems and say for each of those things, which ones are doing audio capture, which ones are to play, which ones are video output devices, which ones are disk drives, tape drives, things like that. Okay? So you don't have to hardwire things into your program. You can go and take a look at the machine and say, where might I get data? Um, if you're building a GUI, you could say, what are all the audio devices hooked up to this machine? Let me put them in the menu so people can pick which one they want to use. You don't have to build in, look at audio 1 and audio 3, because some machines might have audio 2 and audio 4. This is the library you use for that. 